Uh, let's look a little bit closer um, at the <clears throat> construction of the dashboard module itself. The dashboard uh, module in its uh, constructor here has a reference to the Unity container. And um, I haven't shown you any code where I actually go and try and create this dashboard module. The only other reference we had to it was in the bootstrapper here. Let me go ahead and I need to uncomment uh, my reference to my dashboard. Um, and down here, I need to add my references to my dashboard and also my infrastructure that I created so that I can comment this my references will work so my dashboard module which is that class within the dashboard uh, prism demo dashboard project is declared here a module and added to the catalog <clears throat> when the catalog is initialized as one of the last steps of the bootstrapping process it's going to create um, a dashboard module for me and it's going to the container is going itself is going to try to resolve any references uh, that are specified by that dashboard module in this case um, I added a dependency on the Unity container, so the container itself is going to pass a reference to itself into this dashboard module and allow us to capture that and use it again um, for our purposes. So during the initialize method, um, I am able to use the container to be able to resolve references. Once again, uh, I mentioned that we've got a very good video uh, in the references and a example of a very good book that talks about the use of containers. I could here have just said uh, nude up a new dashboard uh, controller and assigned it to the controller but I chose to show you an example of how you might use a container to resolve a reference here in this instance. So we're adding a dashboard controller. What's that? If um, That's another class that we have here in our um, project uh, for the dashboard and if you recall from our slides a dashboard controller is going to act to receive messages and load views into regions for us <clears throat> uh, through view injection so uh, creating one of those is one of the first things that we do in our initialization method the next one is to uh, take care of any view discovery anything we just do automatically as far as um, assigning views to regions. And in this case, we're going to be uh, placing that uh, dashboard tab into the body region. We do that by getting a reference to the region manager and then telling the region manager, please register the following view uh, with a region. So we look at the header region. In this case, we're uh, sticking the application header in the header region. And then down here, we are sticking the dashboard view in the body region. So that's going to take care of uh, two things at once. It's going to add our uh, application header. It's going to add our dashboard view. Um, and um, it was easier to just sort of include application header in with dashboard. That's the only reason it's included in here. Um, I've had questions before of why not create a separate module for the application header. It was just kind of overkill um, for this example here. So by registering once again with the region manager um, a view uh, with a region, when the shell um, loads that particular um, control that is marked as a region, Prism will go find any view that's already registered with it and inject it into that region. And then lastly, in our initialization method, uh, if we're in a debugging step, I get a reference to the logger and log the fact that the module, dashboard module, has been initialized. 
So our other, uh, when we get around to adding customers, it's going to follow um, kind of a similar approach. In the initialization method, we're going to create a controller, um, register any views with regions that need to be done, and then log the fact that we've successfully completed our initialization. So let's look at the dashboard controller. If you recall, the dashboard controller is going to uh, work mostly with views and regions to inject views into regions. The dashboard controller itself in its constructor um, and it's um, got a dependency on the Unity container itself. When the Unity container creates the dashboard controller, it's going to pass a reference to itself in. That reference is going to allow us to be able to get references to the logger, the event aggregator, and the region manager that we're going to use um, within this um, application. Or, I'm sorry, this uh, uh, particular controller. We also are going to use the event aggregator to subscribe to a couple of events, the show application message event and the hide application message event. And there are two methods. Um, that are associated with that. During the show application message event, we use our region manager to get a reference to a region. Uh, we also use it to um, create for us, in this case, um, one of the uh, application message view models. We'll see the views in the view models in a moment. It allows us to initialize the view model to be able to obtain a view, in this case an application message view, and if the region um, does not already contain the view, uh, we add it, and then we associate the view's data context with the view model, and then we activate it. This is the process known as view injection. And it's just the opposite process when um, we respond to the hide event, we get a reference to the region, we get a reference to the view, we tell, uh, we ask the region if it contains the view, if it does, please remove it. And that will act to, um, when we hit the close button, um, I'll show you that it, it removes it uh, from the view itself. So we have, uh, as you can imagine, we've got a dashboard view, which is going to be uh, our content of our uh, tab control which has the welcome to Denali outdoors and some Ipsum Solorum, um, um, just general content. We've also got our application header view, which contains our uh, image and it contains our text for Denali outdoors. We've got our application message view, uh, which is going to display whatever message we send to it and then contains a close button. Very simple. That's going to be our modal dialog. And we've got view models in our uh, view model um, folder to be able to back up um, a couple of those. The application header doesn't really need one. There's nothing dynamic about it. There could be, uh, but just for the sake of the uh, demonstration, um, it's the simplest uh, possible example of sticking a view uh, into a region. There's no behavior behind it. <clears throat> Let's look at the dashboard view model that goes with the dashboard view. It's very simple. It's got a title that will be part of the tab. But since it wasn't injected, um, we can look at the dashboard view itself to see how it is associated with the data context. Uh, remember, the dashboard view um, was included in the body region by the approach of using view discovery. Uh, we identified that in the model when we went down here and we told the region manage, manager to register um, a dashboard view with a body region. If you were wondering how the dashboard view model gets associated with that if we're not doing injection like we just saw in the controller, what happens is in the dashboard view and its code behind, we specify a dependency on the view model. Again, here's where the uh, dependency injection container is going to be our friend. Um, it's going to supply that for us. 
it allows us then to be able to set the data context of the dashboard view uh, to the view model. And I've got some comments that hopefully will help you out in understanding that. So this is the view discovery approach as opposed to the view injection approach that we saw with the controller. Thank <music> you.